guys, so today I'm going to be talking about a keystone species. So what is it and why is it important for conservation? So keystone species are particular species within a habitat that have a very critical role to play in how that ecosystem functions. They may also be essential for the survival of other species within that community. So the term keystone species was first used in the late 1960s by zoologist Dr Robert Payne and he conducted experiments on the western coast of the United States looking at the effects of the predatory purple sea star on communities of organisms within that area. Now the purple sea star is a top predator and he looked to see what would happen if he removed this predator from the ecosystem and as he expected it has had a dramatic effect on the community of organisms in the area. The sea stars are one of the main predators for the mussel Mytilus californius. With the sea star gone, the mussel completely dominated in the community, pushing out many other species. From this, he was able to show that some species have very important roles to play in biological communities. Dr Robert Payne's original own definition for a keystone species was a species or a group of species whose impact on community is disproportionately large for their abundance. So in other words, the number of individuals of this particular species is usually very small within a community, but the effects it has on a massive amount of other species can be incredibly large. So many top predators are often considered to be keystone species, and a very obvious example of this is the grey wolf. So there aren't as many individual grey wolves within a habitat as there are plants, herbivores for example, but if you take them out of the ecosystem, then the effects on all the other species can be huge. In the UK, wolves disappeared around the 17th century, the loss of this top predator meant that populations of roe deer and red deer absolutely exploded. And as a result, habitat was severely overgrazed and trampled, which affected many herb shrub species and also other plants. And it was very difficult for them to regenerate with so many red deer. Because of this, there was also a huge effect on animals that depended on the plants for their own survival, such as many types of insects. Reduced plant cover could also result in more soil erosion, which could then also be affecting species that actually live in the soil. So by removing a keystone species, it can have a phenomenal effect on a whole range of different organisms. But it's not only top predators that can be classed as keystone species. Beavers are also a very common example of a keystone species due to their role as ecosystem engineers. So in other words, their activities modify the physical environment. Because beavers build dams, they create large areas of new wetland habitat. This introduces many new species within the area and so increases biodiversity. Plants can also be keystone species, often acting as a major food source. For example, fig trees in some forests are the only tree that produces food year-round, and many bird and mammal species have now come to rely on this food source. So with this in mind, it is essential for conservation purposes that we identify these keystone species within a community. If these keystone species can be identified, then they can be given priority when it comes to conservation. Because if we can save the keystone species, then we have a much greater chance of preventing the losses of other species in the area that depend on it.